we have, it looks like, uh, Conrad going first? I think so, yeah. I thought Nigel drew first. Anyways, let's have a look. Yeah, it's uh, Conrad with two U's and a port. Kind of like dumping the two U's. What do you think, Jason? Platform recommends that, yeah. See, it looks good to me. Brett, what do you think? Um, I don't necessarily like the P. I'm not a massive fan of P. Um, but, yeah, I can give him what he's keeping with it. I don't know. It, it depends on my mood on the day. I, I certainly think I'll be changing with that, right? <laughs> Nigel on his side has oilier and an E. I can change in here myself as well. Because um, my opponent's given me a free dip into the bag. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to score, what, a couple of points? Conrad on the other side of the board has drawn all consonants to his ART leave. He's picked up. Um, K, P, J, and T. Paco much prefers keeping A, O, P, R, T, just exchanging the two U's over any other exchange. Um, so it thinks it's about a 1.5 percentage win percentage better than keeping A, P, R, T. Nigel's opted to change E, I, O. Nigel has uh, an interesting, well it's not quirk, and I think other people have noticed this in the past, but it particularly hit me in a game I played with him at Worlds. Um, even if the move is obvious, he will sit there for a good minute and a half uh, to try and work out. So he had a, a game-winning bonus, it was the only rack that he could have that would win the game against me. And when he sat there for a minute and a half, I thought, well he can't have it. So he must be trying to come up with a better solution. No, 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 he had it. Uh, so I just had to sit there for a couple of minutes um, while he sorted out the, the best play. Um. Yeah, actually, we mentioned that uh, a little bit earlier today, I think, that mm -hmm. regardless, uh, Nigel takes a little bit and eventually puts it down. And similar with the challenge when, when he holds, it's never an insta challenge. He holds, waits about 20 seconds or so, then pauses the clock, and you're dead. Yeah, who who was describing that to us? The they were describing that like I guess it was a Kenji when he was looking at a catalog of Nigel's annotated videos that he would always look like line up the play and then look at it for forty five seconds and then make it. Yeah, and the theory was that he just did the same thing every time so that nobody could read anything out of anything. Yeah, that, that was basically the theory. Um, yeah, that he tries to look like he's doing the same thing no matter what. But I, I personally don't think he's trying. I think he is genuinely just trying to play the best that he can. Um, and I think one of the one of the things I like about Nigel's play and his approach to the game is his focus is on playing the best he can. Now that sounds obvious, but a lot of players' focus is to win the game. Um, and I think he just gives himself the time to make sure he's playing the best move available to him uh, because he enjoys playing the game well. The rest of it is academic. He just happens to win a hell of a lot as well. Hmm. I don't think he's got any sort of um, ulterior motives behind his plays usually. Uh, except occasionally when he does phony. I wonder if he's deliberately trying to game his opponent. But, uh, he's never going to give us the answer to that. That's also been covered when uh, people have said during this uh last couple of days, why not just ask Nigel about a play? It's like, oh, yeah. you're not going to get a straight up answer ever. Yeah. <laughs> and yes, Peter Andronowski, it is true. Another friggin update, as you say. <laughs>
content would play something like uh, text with the rack that Conrad has at the moment to completely box up the board. I notice Nigel tends to just default to creating boxes early on. Sometimes mm. I like to play along with him. Um, mm, I think Oxter is probably the standout player too. Oxter for 44. Well, if you want to get scoring about it, I suppose that's an option. <laughs> Conrad uh, does enjoy playing defense, so uh, that's one of the things mm -hmm. that, um, given Conrad's one of my closest friends and in Scrabble or otherwise, I know a little bit about the way he plays, and um, I know that he is insistent that even in Collins, with more words and more options available, it is very possible to play a defensive, if not outright, closed board. So um, if he chooses to, he does go for plays that can score and close the board. So I wouldn't be surprised to see text here from him. Yeah, but if you play text. Oh, even on that text uh, is really worse would, yeah. than Oxer. Even yeah, the defensive yeah, text, like you you're, you're, not, you're not creating a closed board so much as you're creating a board that is great for certain letters like the S and the A that you don't have. I think Oxter was probably the, well, was the correct play, mate. Well, yeah. Also, obviously, he's given Nigel the slow check. Yeah. So here we go. We should, we should take spread bets, I think. How long will Nigel take before he plays? Right. <laughs> the only bonus. Oh, I think he's, he's deciding to speed play it. I don't think that was the proper 45 seconds, right? It was close to 45 seconds, yeah. yeah. I, mean, if, <laughs> I, I think. I think, I mean, I, I basically agree with you, Brett, that he does, he, he, yeah, he savors making, just playing well and making the best play each time, regardless of the outcome. But I think also he recognizes that the, the performative aspects of playing Scrabble are sometimes just as important as, like, the, what play you end up making. And I think just he realized, he's decided that doing the consistent timing every time is uh, important to him playing optimally. Or rather that that is part of playing optimally. I'm glad lacking the uh, O for pogrom would that work. Pure points, it's hard to ignore Moped alongside Rural Light. Mm -hmm. Slightly better leave option like Gem and M. That's a 15 point. That gum uh, drop's quite sweet. Yeah, gum drop's cool. Yeah, lined up moped considering that now I've only watched uh, a few games that Conrad has played of uh, CSW um, I believe he, he's still primarily uh, a TWL player has there been any um, situations that we've seen so far from him that maybe word knowledge or being able to discern what's where has, has caused him any issues in this one Actually, Conrad has uh, switched to Collins now as his primary book. That happened in the last okay. year or so. Um, 
that I know for a fact. So uh, we're acknowledged as far as just differentiating between the books. Uh, that is a non-issue for this tournament for sure. Well, I mean, finding words is one thing. Yes, he would admit that he's perhaps you know not word finding ideally, but well, it, the confusion. No, that's not an issue. Even if okay. you've only been playing for a, I mean, if, if even if even switching over primarily the last year, you'd still have issues, right? No, but Brett's asking specifically if it's like switching back and forth between them, if there's an issue related to that, and oh, yeah. that I would say no, there is not. And I think often it's not so much the words, it's the the reflexes that you automatically think, oh, well, that there's nothing I can do down there, and then you forget the word you know in your new dictionary. Um, and, and a lot of players, I think, will play to their gut um, immediately, and then they'll reason through. Um, but it's good. I mean, all right-thinking people play CSW, so it's, it's on the board. <laughs> no bias there at all. <laughs> <laughs> no, Conrad's I, got uh, remaking and rearming and all sorts of options here. Starting to play nav, um, which seems the uh, the standard option here. Yep. Peter Andronowski asks about uh, positioning of nav to make vor as opposed to that position. Any thoughts, Brett, if uh, you're choosing between the two, uh, why do you go with this one over that one? Um, well, in the, I think I would like to play to the left if I felt that Conrad maybe had fished off a couple of tiles in the last go and was very close to a bingo rack um, because I'm creating a, a counter play for myself down the left hand side. Um, conveniently, I'd keep the end for the, the Namu hook as well to maximize my score down there. Um, but in this situation where we don't really have too much information about what Conrad has kept, uh, we assume he hasn't got a blank or an S because moped plus blank or S like to have something. Um, so nav is perfectly good um, on the right hand side, restrictive. Um, I think it scores the same. Um, yeah. Just over a 50 point lead with that play. These are the kinds of situations I'm, I'm very interested in how it plays because mm -hmm. um, I've had a couple of games against him in the past where I've had a lead and I feel he should be busting the board open. Um, now, he's not desperately behind at the moment, but he tends to uh, make very restricted openings. He tends to keep it still quite tight, um, unless he's 200 behind and has to make a nine time opening or something. Um, whereas I think some people, when they fall behind by 50 points, um, all of a sudden start blowing the board open left, right, and center. Um, right. Sometimes I wonder if Nigel should be more aggressive in those situations. Um, I've certainly seen games where I think he, the board just chokes and I can't ever see him coming back. Um. Yeah, I, I, I totally agree with you. And I, I think what is optimal is probably much closer to how Nigel plays than how most people play. Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, most people... Yeah. 
I wouldn't have much Nigel's, Nigel's style. It depends upon his opponents making mistakes, um, and he gives them an opportunity to make a mistake. Um, mm -hmm. ah, yeah. In the uh, the past for the North American Championships, uh, that did seem to be a pattern a lot, uh, where he would get given games. Uh, that doesn't seem to be the case nearly as often anymore. But yeah, what you're saying certainly was a theme uh, on our side of the pond in the past. Uh, not sure if that happens as often anymore, but certainly is a factor. Mm. Yeah, I think that like when, when I look at this, as of what you said applies to the situation, like that we're not even halfway th through the game. We're maybe two fifths through the game, and he's only down by fifty. And so I, it, it's for the most part, you should just play for the highest equity you can. Um, without trying to do anything special for an open or a closed, whatever. And, yeah. Conrad going for a nice high score there. Whereas a lot of people, a lot of ex even expert players will, will be 50 behind a third of the way through the game and start sacrificing equity for, like, opening stuff, which it often doesn't make sense. It makes you feel good about you're trying hard, but it's probably detrimental to your overall winning chances. I like this play a lot because he's got the seed to hook the MY a little later on. Ooh, yeah, very nice. Unlikely that Conrad is going to accidentally block it. Mm -hmm. All of the scoring opportunities for him are elsewhere on the board, really. Nigel does have this nice way of the openings he creates. When he bingos in them, it closes the board down. So mm. he's not making a, a wildly open board that his opponent can then come back at him. He bingos, goes 50 up, and the board mm. is dead. Mm. Um. Nice play. Wow, that's awesome. Guffa. Very nice. What is a guffa? That's beautiful. I think he was a, an English rugby player. Um, <laughs> 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 He was an English journalist and television sports commentator, there you go. But he didn't spell <laughs> it with an H, so he, he, even he wasn't as good. <laughs> cool, I feel like uh, playing Gubba has made up for text. Interesting, <laughs> so I just looked at the uh, looked at the chat. Some uh, Joel Sherman put in a request for the definition of Gubba, and the Aerolith robot responds that the definition is uh, a white man. It oh, also yeah. can, is gub, G-U-B is the exact same thing. Like, oh, that, that's lame. Yeah, gub, gub means a, a pig, and I think the, uh, is it a long pig was the, the term for a human, uh, a man generally, so mm. that's the link. And how times have changed. <laughs> <laughs> actually interesting now as I think out loud uh, I remember watching um, a Flintstone Christmas Carol when I was a kid and I remember uh, when uh, Mr. Scrooge has had his you know awakening and becomes you know a better person all of a sudden he throws a bag of money to the kid and I can still think of him saying uh, after Scrooge sends him to the store to buy a big turkey he's like all right on me way gub and now I can kind of make sense of that I'm guessing it was probably a <laughs> Uh, Breton or someone similar who wrote the script for that, but cool. I learned something new. I never knew what gub went in that context. I just assumed it meant some kind of man, but as you mentioned, possibly. Did, um, did, did you know that the people in Qatar do not get this, the uh, Flintstones, but the people in Abu Dhabi do? 
Really? <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> Um, I, I was going <laughs> to have a more serious conversation. Um, I mean, I, Azoth scores obviously a lot, but yeah. uh, the synergy of e ETH, is, is it worth playing Zoea and sacrificing some points to keep F? Um, these are the kinds of situations that sometimes I, I'm not quite sure how to go for that. Obviously, Azoth scores a lot more. Do you bank the score now? Yeah, I think, yeah, I think so. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, and the sim, it, the sim likes Azov by about as many points as, or yeah, by seven points, like two win percentages, yeah. ninety-one percent versus eighty-eight percent. It might be different, maybe if the Val were more, if the bag were more Val heavy, but it's just not yeah. that many Vals. There is a lot though. Also, th three S's and a blank. Yeah. And then. So, are those scores correct? Those comrades. 95 ahead. Yes. Now, from this perspective, the bag is very all heavy, including six E's and six I's, two A's, two O's, and two U's. Mm. pretty clever to play fag instead of fall to make it more likely to bingo there. I think that's the Q, not the O. Oof, I yeah. Right. Yes, yeah. that is a Q. <laughs> First a thing Q I thought was, oh, he set up collets beautifully, but oh no. So maybe considering something like uh, W A I T E for Conrad now, often Fay, mm. uh, kill that bottom left, plays underneath. Yeah, I like that. No argument from me. else is probably looking at Conrad's rack right now I'm just looking at Nigel's face these are rare opportunities to study the tells <laughs> I think there's a slight quiver in that right shoulder <laughs> the MYC spot. But I guess it opens up <laughs> its own little thing. Yeah. 
I th- I th- well, probably, yes, it takes like the NYC, it's probably more restricting the players underneath the bag, but um, the, the NYC spot, I, I wouldn't worry about too much. I mean, you've got to have the C or the blank, it and then has to be the beginning letter. Um, so, would, would he have seen weight and uh, not played it because he doesn't want to give away a plan to the triple? I'd say fairly likely, yeah. It's also possible he's not a hundred percent sure of weight. I know he knows it for certain. Ah, uh, but he's drawn out uh, a very strong rap there. Yeah, that'll help. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think maybe Aviette. Uh, or something similar. Peter Andronowski says, Nigel seems human this tournament. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I would say so. Uh, I think it's pe- people say that. I, I'm sure I've read Kenji say that somewhere else. That Ni- Nigel is probably playing at the same stand that he always does. Mm-hmm. What this shows is that Scrabble uh, can be a great equalizer. And regardless of how well you play, sometimes you just ain't going to win. Um, and if Nigel played the same way and the tiles went slightly better for him, everyone would be uh, remarking about how amazing he was. Uh, I think yep. Nigel is still as inhuman as ever. I totally agree that he plays at the same level all of every time. situation just to leave the video inside in obstructive position. Doesn't really matter. Interesting to see what Nigel plays here due to the um, reduced usefulness of the S's on this board. Uh, although maybe something like QIN and Boreen mm-hmm. making another S hook down that right hand side. Um, yeah, that's nice. few decisions in this kind of situation, you might say, well, S's aren't worth that much, so I'll use it for a little bit more of score, or 
Oh, wow. So as I was saying, Nigel tends not to make openings. Um, <clears throat> wow. That's a do or die move, I think. Yeah, I mean, any, any play loses, right? So it, yeah. it's this, uh, it's... Allow your opponent this... to make a mistake. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. We can put that up on the screen, in fact. Uh, we'll put the remaining tiles uh, on the screen so you can see exactly what's there. What is your favorite Nigel story? <laughs> um, I, to be honest, it's all clouded by the 180.9 timer he played against me in Move 3 uh, at the World Championships. Um, uh, smashing all my hopes and dreams. Um, mm. yeah, do, I, do I have any? Uh, I think every game with Nigel I find fascinating, whether he played bonus or not. Actually, Probably the most interesting story I have in my mind um, is nothing to do with him over the board. Um, as a lot of people watching this will probably have seen and, and know, I, I did the commentary alongside Chris Light for the final of the World Championship this year, and um, mm. uh, we were all staying together in the same hotel beforehand. So I had breakfast with Nigel and I was speaking to him about you know, what he sees the future of Scrabble being and uh, what, what motivates him and drives him. And uh, what genuinely fascinated me. Um, it is his is his love of language, um, it, and actually he's got a real, a really deep understanding of how the dictionaries are structured and the makeup of um, each lexicon. Um, mm. So he was talking uh, very knowledgeably about how the French language is constructed, um, how the number of base words in French varies uh, from, from English base words and so on. Mm. Um, and I found that quite refreshing um, in a world that we're always talking about equity and we're talking about the numbers that lie behind the game. Um, what we see here is we're the, the best the world has seen um, in Scrabble, or, or, or certainly in the top two, sorry, present company excluded. Um, <laughs> but he, um, it, it's great that he has such a passion for language. Um, and as someone who came into this game as more of a linguist than a mathematician, um, it, it sort of gives me a nice warm feeling inside that we still have some of that. Um, so I, th mm -hmm. I think we do lose that sometimes when selling the game to new players because some new players come in genuinely because they, they like words. Um, mm -hmm. I think it's important we have people representing the game who genuinely excel um, coming at it from that point of view as well. Um, mm -hmm. so yeah, it was good breakfast. Was yeah. Good chat. Good chat. <laughs> Did he talk about... I, I also uh, spoke to him actually about why he never does interviews. Um, mm. And uh, he said it, it really has nothing to do with the game. Um, it just detracts from the game. So he, uh, and, and also he said the, um, the interviewers do nothing for him, so why should he do anything for them? Uh, mm. Which is a valid point, I suppose. Mm. Jesse was mentioning that Nigel was thinking of studying and learning the Spanish dictionary and then competing in the Spanish championships. Yep. Did you talk about that That's, with you? That was his next plan. Hmm. I think he, again, he, he analyzes the languages before he starts learning to work out how 
easy and accessible uh, mm. learning the entire language will be. Um, because obviously when anyone wants to learn an entire language in six weeks, you go for ease of learning. Um, <laughs> so Spanish, I think, was, was the next in terms of how many base words you had to learn. Um, French is so accessible from a Scrabble point of view because you're, you're talking only in the tens of thousands of base words and then everything else is inflection. Really? Um, so as long as you learn the base word plus what part of language it is, you instantly have another 10, 15 words that are added to your um, vocabulary. Mm -hmm. what, why are there so few base words in French? I don't know, lack of imagination. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no hatred for the French there. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, so far in this transmission, I have alienated the French, I have alienated TWL players. Um, Oh, and Brexiteers. So, uh, <laughs> okay. I was say, it's going yeah. well. <laughs> <laughs> Nigel, uh, I mentioned uh, the Spanish dictionary with him at lunch today as well. We mm -hmm. talked about a few things, and uh, that was the one of the ones that came up. And he said that there would be, if you were to learn every single word in the Spanish lexicon, it's over 600,000. Uh, so he said that was uh, nearly double what you would have to learn to learn all of the French ones. So it's a new level of challenge just because there are more conjugations of words so like you said in French uh, if you learn a certain number of the base words and learn the conjugations of them then you have many more uh, Spanish is even more an example of the same thing just because there's more moods there's different ways to, con to conjugate in the subjunctive in Spanish that don't exist in French and so forth so uh, as a result you get many more different ways to do the exact same word and it's inspiring for me um, as someone who on a smaller scale probably than both of you loves language. Uh, I enjoyed getting to study Applied Linguistics University and uh, wish that I had more courses available to me besides that of my minor but yeah like you said it is nice to see someone who just loves the words as well and uh, to get further in the game uh, at an expert level you kind of put aside the inconsistency of the dictionary and have to focus more on the love of the game whether it's uh, the mathematics or just enjoying the words as they are and yeah, it's nice to see someone like Nigel who just appreciates genuinely the words and all about the words. Mm -hmm. So you're saying that Spanish has twice as many base words as French? Well, not so many, not so much twice as many base words, but more conjugations. So like when you have twice as many of the inflections that Brett's mm -hmm. talking about. So Do you know how the base word number compares? Uh, that's a good question. Uh, I don't know how that would go, mm -hmm. but I know that conjugation wise there would be many more ways to change the same word mm. some of them are really close though right so like you might have um, something that ends in a for one conjugation in Spanish another one where you just add an n to that another where you add an s and in that sense you know they're almost the same word except for one or two letters different or where you have an A before, you can put an MOS at the end because that's the we conjugation. So there you already have like four or five different spellings and it's the exact same word. takes that game by just over a hundred points. Mm -hmm. He played well except for text. Yeah, probably just yep. text. <laughs>
Yeah, I get to sit down. Oh, look who it is. It's Kumar. Kumar has set up all of the videoing and the streaming and, and all of the graphics. And it's done such a good job. Oh, wouldn't it have been possible without suggestions from everyone, including yourself and Jesse and everyone on the chat? We're just doing, trying to do what we can do. Did, did so well. So, what is your what is your day job? I do streaming. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, uh, not usually in this kind of setup. We do more sports streaming um, with actual sports cameras. <laughs> so this is a. I mean, this is a rather lean setup that we've got. Mm. One box here, another box somewhere else, and just a few makeshift cameras. And a laptop that weighs and 40 pounds. a number of laptops, actually. <laughs> You've got what? How many laptops do we need for this? One, two, three. Um, on that side, I've got another system. Four laptops. Ideally, I should have five. Uh, five, five we, have. We, will, we will have a lot more wonderful graphics going on. Mm. What sports do you cast in Singapore? Uh, mostly for football. Oh yeah, because uh, football is a big thing. So do live streaming. Um, the media companies in Singapore basically buy my equipment. So the one that box that you see over there that does something that is uh, pretty much a live production studio huh. on the go. Whoa. It's not like uh, you would have in uh, you know your usual production for stream quality of this kind. You'll need like one van full of equipment. Yeah. So I've somehow miniaturized that machine. And that machine is uh, something that we've been selling around to Southeast Asia. Oh, you sell yeah. that? Yeah, we do. Oh, wow. It's not cheap. <laughs> yeah. How much does it cost? That box, there, yeah, that's about 20,000 US. Hmm. But look, it, it, can, it can do all of these things that you usually that's get crazy. only in the production studio. Yeah, wow. Right? Yeah. And it has a computer screen on it. <laughs> yeah, it has. <laughs> Yeah. Anyway, what I would like to know from the chat group is, is there anything else they would like to have in the next <laughs> stream? I mean, I've tried to do as much as I can. Uh, uh, we've seen uh, things, we've seen, hold on, we need power for this laptop. It's going to die soon oh, and we're not going to have that, something. I'll do that. Yeah. So if you've got any... Yeah. So ah, Oldorf says, nice job, Kumar. Thank you, Oldorf. And... Uh, and G.I. Joel, is it? Yeah, that's Joel Sherman. Ah, Joel Sherman, thank Joel you so Sherman. much. All right. Uh, I don't know very many of the world champions are away from this part of the world because I, I do play Scrabble too, if you've uh, realized, but <laughs> nothing close to the people who play. Uh, they're just sort of different, insane, out of the world level. But really, to be, uh, if we can do anything more, I'd love to hear suggestions. So just keep it coming. We've tried to do as much as we can. Uh, ah, small suggestion. I love this. <laughs> Move the name tags under the players to the tracking to where the name tags are. I'm not sure what they know what that means. Oh, I think they probably want the tracking to be always visible. Is that, Brent, are you saying that the tracking should be always visible? Tracking? Mm. Ha, thank you. <laughs> the the pop-up messages were supposed to be my, my idea of fun, really. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I'll do as much. Um, let's see. Move to name text under the players. So under the players, we've got... Oh, 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 okay, for the points, is it? Right. Um, actually, that was what we intended to do at first. Um, there was supposed to be... That, that right corner was supposed to be more of a branding space, but uh, <laughs> um, as you all notice, the first day of streaming, we had some problems. Uh, we, we had the most basic setup. That's because... Um, I mean, the hotel staff here are wonderful, the IT, the staff is wonderful, but there were some hiccups with the internet connection the first day, so I couldn't get connection or good connection to the next room where the games are mm. um, until about 10 minutes before the event, so I couldn't really do all the setup. So our original plan, we had quite a fair bit of things that we wanted to do. Um, in the original planning, we had Michael and uh, Jesse. Um, Jason, were you in the group? A little bit. Yeah, so we had to, we had some discussion on what should be inside, and um, we tried to put as much information. And in. I guess it does help that I am a Scrabble player myself, not just a streaming person. Yeah. I think people want the tile tracking to be always visible. 
I, I personally want it to be always visible. I think Brent Jam is also saying they want it to be always visible. Yeah, I intended to put that on the right hand side of the screen always, but there was a little bit of a problem with this uh, because we're using the tile tracking from Quackle and Quackle's tile tracking with that the column keeps changing if every time you use up a letter. So when that happens, uh, it's going to mess up with the alignment, the whole thing, which is one of the reasons why I didn't put it inside. Uh, but I hope to be able to do something next time, maybe to extract information from Quackle so I don't use screenshots from the Quackle, and then this might be possible. But that will be an upgrade for the next time. Could you just have it be the max with the whole time? Um, no, but this, the, the, the unseen tiles always changes width. Yeah, this um, that's, that's a major problem. <laughs> and I, I don't like to have the gray space outside and yeah, inside. Oh, and okay. that, that changes and messes a number of things so with alignment and uh, aesthetic issues. Okay. Yeah. And the scroll bar for keeping informed about team individual placings, I wish I could do that. Uh, I would have been able to do that with more resources. Uh, because for that you need one more extra manpower and one more laptop connected to the thing. I've already used up all four laptops I can use. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, maybe next time when we have more resources, we'll be able to do that. Okay, um, Ariana, is the next game starting? Are they in the playlist? Okay, so I think uh, that's my one minute of fame. <laughs> okay, thank you everyone.